So a while ago, I used to do this thing where I'd download game demos and prototypes and stuff like that, and I'd play them on my Twitch stream, and it was nice. I got to stumble upon some really cool games and some stuff that was just fascinating. This bird has seen God. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done it, but with the latest Steam Next Fest, I thought I'd bring it back. I went past the popular stuff like I always do and started checking out things that maybe you didn't get around to. For this video, I'm just going to focus on roguelikes. I've been a fan of a bunch of them, even speed ran them. It's not like I'm the most qualified or anything, but at least I find them interesting. And hopefully you will too. I'm Huffin, and this is Demo Disc. Alright, so first up we have Coreless, which is a roguelike action game, the unique meta progression system. Uh, really reminded me of Risk of Rain 2 right out of the gate, and I've seen other folks make comments along those lines. But there's a lot of room in that comparison to do your own thing, so let's give it a look. Oh, we're just grooving right now. You could be a guy, or you could be Robot Cat. I'm a cat now. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna let my familiars do the work as I run away. I'm, I guess there's two more of these like encounters that I have to do before the boss. Hello. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here in the middle of the bubbles. And we're on to the next zone. I, I am I'm kinda liking the vibe on this on this level. Tower charging, okay. Misfortune Matrix. <laughs> yes. I love calling my AoE a misfortune matrix. <laughs> That's a large lad. That's a that's a big man. He's coming to goop me. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Throw out some more summons. Uh, dodge that. Just all that that's happening. Get hit by that anyway. I think I've almost got it, but yeah. I barely had any idea how to hit it. On to the third level. What's trying to kill me now? Uh, guys with swords. <laughs> After the last couple of levels, these enemies are kinda funny. They're just skeletons with bows. <laughs> Get out of here, robot cat. The necromancers are after you. Yeah, there's a scroll now. Legacy upgrade. Every three seconds, you cast out a floating skull that targets a random nearby unit, dealing 700% damage. Yeah. <laughs> Just absolutely wrecked that necromancer. What? Hello. Hello. <laughs> you ever feel like the game just said no? <laughs> I feel like that's what just happened. All right, that's that was an interesting character. Let's go with let's go with the basic boy. He's he's just a guy. You know, it might be because I just came off of a pretty powerful run, but this guy actually feels harder. Uh, gotta be Electro Mastery. He's got a lot of Electro. This guy looks like he would make Electro. You know, find him down at the club. This map is actually, like, pretty big relative to the points of interest. It's boss time.
It's boss time, Eyeball. You're not the boss. Somehow the harder character is easier. So when I finished playing, I was like, yeah, this game rocks. Running around, spamming summons, all that shit, loved it. And I still think the game is generally good. I'm just not as into it as I was initially. And I think it comes down to pacing. The first run, everything being all spread out was fine. You're still getting the feel for it. But pretty quickly, I just wanted to get on to the next bit. I know Risk of Rain has a lot of running around too, but at least getting around feels better there. The meta progression focus, that's nice, it's a good idea. I do worry that it won't feel like it matters. That's a tough part of those like small, steady progressions. You can't really feel the difference one run to the next. So I hope there is stuff that's really impactful behind all of those question marks. So yeah, this didn't exactly feel like Risk of Rain 2, and I think for some people that will be a positive, some people that will be a drawback. Uh, I do have to say though, the vibes are on point. Music's great, no notes. Next is Footgun Underground, roguelike meets soccer, or football. I'm going to swap between the two just to annoy everyone. Uh, but yeah, this looks like a novel approach to the combat. I'm curious how it feels. All right, Footgun. Oh, we've, we've popped out of a pod. This, this man has a look. This man has a look. Ball control. Ah. Do, do I understand? This feels like a game where any success is basically going to be accidental. Look at this tube map. Combine items of identical names and rarities into a higher rarity. Yeah. I saw a battery icon real quick. Is that stamina? Is there a stamina system in here? Uh, this is starting to come together. I'm still not good. You know, sometimes the strat is just to uh, jump in the air and kick ball. <laughs> and then ball gets big. Oh, this is a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, like I want to go down that pipe. It looks so Mario. And I'll take that so that, like, oh yeah, because these are the same level. I like that it saved my wall of oil. It's smart. It's making for a kind of a slow boss fight, but it could just be me being bad. Yeah, I think the wall of void is, is a problem right now. The bomb does feel like it would be good if not for the wall of void. I'm dead. What is this hub? I can't even play the gotcha. Duck. Duck. So ball control really is the name of the game. Not running into enemies is the other name of the game. Is this what other Americans think soccer is like? It's the special room. It's a pinata! Why can I not double these up? Why is that banned? I did say other Americans. I didn't have to. I called it soccer. Um, I do like the, the conceit of using a a convoluted metro line as your map in a roguelike. I respect it. This is probably the weirdest comparison, but that like little acoustic guitar between levels so it reminded me of non greens which like nobody played. All right, on to the boss. This time we have HP. We're in second phase. It doesn't retreat in second phase. Oh, I think, are those tokens for the gotcha? Curveball Carlos! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, those are tokens for the gotcha. Saw ball. We're gonna try saw ball instead of lava ball. Ooh, okay. That's what that does. <laughs> I think the saw ball is good. <laughs> you know, if I can ricochet a saw ball off the wall a couple of times, <laughs> it's, uh, it gets pretty good. Uh, so this is pretty good, actually. Uh, it took a bit to get a feel for the ball control. There's definitely a learning curve. Uh, but man, that's Sawblade. Uh, Roguelike demos can really struggle to show how builds could evolve and be interesting, but hey, this gave me something right out of the gate. Uh, the upgrades definitely impacted things. Uh, I already have upgrades that I just hate and will not be taking that wall avoiding thing anymore. And that actually relates to one of my main complaints, which is enemy variety. Everything was a bug. And either it crawled along the wall or it flew around in the middle of the room. That was it. Now, granted, the demo is one zone. If you go through one zone of Slay the Spire, there's not that many enemies, but even different enemies felt very samey. And also, yeah, you can learn to master the controls, and it does feel nice to do that, but you can also just kind of flail around and get by. And I think that's okay. You don't want the skill floor to be too high, but I think it would be nice if there was a bonus for clearing rooms quickly. Or maybe that is how it works and you're not told, I don't know. Uh, but if not, it might be worth adding. And last thing, and this is gonna sound weird on a roguelike video, but by the end of it, I almost wanted this to be a Metroidvania. Or like there's a different game that exists as a Metroidvania with the same football concept and like the different kinds of balls or the upgrades. Cause like, the movement felt nice. And I just wanted to explore using that. And I wanted to stumble on new, different environments and not just be stuck in rooms, you know? But yeah, I enjoyed it. It's on my wish list. Uh, I mostly hope that the later zones mix things up a bit more. Uh, mainly, I just want to spend more time with Curveball Carlos. Love that guy. Right, we have Rootin', Tootin', Lootin', and Shootin'. I guess, tag yourself. I'm Tootin'. Uh, this is a turn-based twin-stick shooter roguelike. I guess that'll make for a bit of a super hot feel. Let's find out. Revolver, shoot a bullet. That is what revolvers do. You know what, we're gonna take a shotgun. Have I taken the shotgun? Yeah. Am I out of bullets? Have I done all my shooting? I'm, I'm down to rootin' and tootin'? And I suppose lootin'? I see. Yeah, this is like turn-based. But I'm also aiming like it's enter the gungeon? I've been... Um... Things have not gone well with the shopkeeper. So this is, this is weird. Because it is definitely turn-based, but is also definitely, you know, kind of free aim. And you have, like, no ammo. Let's try the rifle. I missed. I hit a mouse. There we go. Like, I'm, I'm out of gun. I will take your flamethrower. I was, I was accosted in the shop. I see. Dynamite could not possibly be a good idea. That money disappears so fast. I picked up a wooden shield. I've used up the wooden shield. I have to wait for my weapon to recharge. Okay, I need to go back real quick because I just realized these are cardinals. Like agents of a church, cardinals. I'm up against the Pope here. You seem to have created your own situation, bird. Now, now that I'm seeing how to like handle it 
more methodically. Uh, it's, it's a strange one. That's a boss. That's a boss. It says boss. I don't know how to handle. You know, that, that did help handle. It turns out I do know how to handle. Okay, that did not end the demo, which is good. I think I have I have to go through those angry horses. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was an armadillo coming to kick my ass. I don't feel great about my prospects, but I've got dynamite and a rock. I do not have the means by which to handle the boss. So I'm kind of, uh, literally out of weapons. Inside the present was a rocket launcher. I have been able to handle the situation. <laughs> so this is apparently made in a fully two-dimensional game engine, uh, which is neat. The devs did a nice effect under that limitation. You know, get that ape-out feel, uh, though it is a fair bit slower. Uh, but still, I love when people really stretch what an engine can do. Uh, but mechanically, how well does it work? I would say not as well as Super Hot. Uh, it's similar, for sure, it just wasn't as exciting. And I think a big part was that I never felt well equipped. In Super Hot, there's always something to pick up and keep flowing. And here, I found myself just running around because I didn't have anything. And it sucks because it feels like the run is over at that point. Those kind of death spirals in a roguelike run, those always just suck. But this feels fixable. Some more stuff in the environment to improvise with, or some weak desperation attack. Just some way to keep the game going. And there's a lot of other things that I think the game needs to tweak. Uh, for one, money disappears way too fast. Uh, but I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of improving a game when there's big parts of the field that just aren't working for it yet. Once it feels like a player can actually recover in their run, then I think this will be moving in a much better direction. So I do play an MMO and I've done a bit of raiding. So a roguelike where you're a bunny and it's built on raid mechanics? Uh, this is my shit. <laughs> the dev does say, and it's a solo dev by the way, that if you're playing solo it is more of a bullet hell. Uh, let's, let's see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna do my monologue here and I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, first off, if you're playing solo, this is definitely a bullet hell. Uh, but even solo, the raiding mechanics are everywhere. Now I haven't played any Toho games, so I don't know how complicated they get as bullet hells, but from having played things like Ikaruga or Zero Ranger, there's different things going on here. But co-op is the main selling point on this. So I asked some other Final Fantasy XIV raiders that I know, and Astro was willing to come join me. We did a couple runs, but I guess my setup didn't like Discord. Uh, you just can't hear her, can't use the audio. Uh, that's, that's entirely on me. Uh, so anyway, we ran first on normal, got all the way through pretty easily. Uh, Astra had played before, so that helped. Uh, so then we tried the Lunar difficulty. She did warn me that Lunar would be ridiculous, and who boy. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me put this in Final Fantasy XIV terms. The normal difficulty is like your normal raids. It's not super casual, but it's not all that hard. Then you've got hard, uh, which is more like the extreme trials, turning maybe into savage raids. There's, there's challenge there. Uh, Lunar is on the high end of savage, maybe ultimate. I mean, it's, it's fast, it's visually noisy. There's no real room for error. 
And you're trying to do all of this while doing your rotation, because yeah, this isn't a bullet hell where you're just shooting off from a distance. Most classes need to get up close. You've got your four abilities, your primary, secondary, special, defensive, and you need to keep your DPS up, especially on the higher difficulties. I mean, this is a raiding game. There are enrages. But how good is it as a roguelike? It's fine. I never found items that changed how I approached each fight, so it's really more about optimizing your DPS. Now, there are combos that will make you change how you approach your rotation, but it's still your rotation. Now, at the lower difficulties, that doesn't really matter. It just speeds up the fights. I feel like this is a game that kind of starts at the hard difficulty, though. That does mean that your build really depends on your class. Now, there are five classes in the demo. The dev has shown two more. I can imagine even more appearing. But I didn't see items that made, like, subclasses, you know? I kind of wish it had that. But as it stands, I do see this being a good time for folks who are into MMO raiding. Uh, it's something to do with your static in between raid tiers, and if that sentence means nothing to you, then I hope you like bullet hells. So here we have Dispel. This is a Souls-like roguelike, and definitely the most like rogue of this set. It's a dungeon crawler with permadeath. That's rogue. Uh, so this is probably going to feel a bit old school, but let's see. The Knight Sorcerer. This is some Priscilla ass outfit. I'm sorry, like... Yeah, turn, turn your eyes off. They're too loud. They're too they're too loud? They're too loud. We're going to be the fungoid. Like, that's simply going to happen. They have no cause of their gender and they look constantly tired. Like, this is... this this is... this is me. Dramatic. Okay, now I can use a controller. Uh, I take a few steps and immediately take damage uh, falling through the ground, so it's actually a Kingsfield-like. E on my controller to open. I don't know that I can lock on to targets. What is this? Reduce magic defense on 30%. I, I suspect everything here is gonna to wanna to kill me. Oh! <laughs> Hold on. I landed on that thing, and that gave me a blessing. Reduce health on 30%, or a curse. He hit me and he died. I mean, this is the dungeon crawling experience. I'm completely lost. This fungus has style. Uh, you don't go in that, is, is the thing. You just don't go in that. Convoluted staff. You gotta, you gotta have a really high IQ to understand that staff. All right, I think I'm just on my way to the boss room. That's so much damage that it does and that I don't do. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the end of the adventure. <sighs> so I rewrote this bit like four times now uh, because yeah, this is clearly a janky game. Controller didn't work, AI is kind of rough, Combat just didn't feel that great. And it just looks and feels kind of generic. I mean, I like the satyrs and the fungoids, but beyond that, I was ready to write it off. Uh, but this actually released in early access right after Next Fest, so I figured, fine, I own actual bad games, so I'll 
buy this, I'll do my due diligence. So I put a few hours in on the full game, and a lot of my comments still hold. The controls improved a little, but combat is still janky and just not appealing. I avoided it whenever I could. Uh, the game loops on itself pretty quickly, it doesn't really scale its new game plus. I would say that there are just three zones, but during one of the few fights that I actually did, this happened. And this just feels like a perfect metaphor for this game. This could be a game that has personality and character, and it, it needs to, to stand out. But what's there so far feels hidden between a generic presentation and obscure systems. It took three hours and actually defeating bosses for me to realize why this game is even called Dispel. So right now, I can't recommend it. There just isn't enough there. But man, I want to. I want to show folks a soulsy dungeon crawler that's obscure but not confusing and has tons of character. And this could become that. And I hope it does. And lastly, we have Perfect Dice, which is a card-based roguelike where all the decisions are made through dice rolls. There have been a few games that have done that kind of combination. Let's see what this one looks like. All right, so we have Perfect Dice. I do see, I see a cube. I've got, I've got five energy. So five damage and five shield. So if I roll a two or a six, it's a miss. Okay, so now a four will do nothing. I'm gonna attack first and get a three. So now a three is invalid. Okay, this is, this is an, an unusual take on it. Understand how a dice works, right click on it. You know, up until he said that, I thought I understood how dice worked. It turns out I do understand how dice work. Aha, I've succeeded. So there is a, a puzzling aspect to this. This game involves a lot more thinking than I expected. I'm having to use my brain. Rude. Ah. Aha. I've used my brain. The ability button is on the right side. Okay. Freeze current energy until next turn. Activate it with three successful rolls. Okay. This really feels like more like a puzzle game <laughs> than anything else. This, I have to completely kick this guy's ass, I see. The ability boost card is usually used second. You say this. This is making me think. <laughs> I was really worried there were six tutorial stages <laughs> at a first glance, but it's just the two. Push the arrow under your hit numbers. Aha! I'm making a beat. We're finally in the actual game. <laughs> that was all just tutorial. That's a lot of energy. This game is weird when you're lucky. The tutorial made it feel very difficult. But when things have a possibility of going your way, it's like, everything's fine. Okay, I don't, I do want to copy that because that'll be a miss. So sure thing, boss. I don't care about losing energy lock right now. I simply uh, want to blast. Uh, so I start blasting. That is a, that is a design. I mean, I should have done maximum first. Absolute misplay. I'm, I'm not smart enough for this game, is what 
I'm I'm seeing. What are you up to? Shaman. I see. Adds a corrupted dice to the player's deck. Like, I'm just going to use dice. It's the thing. Yep. I've I've received a murder and an achievement for being murdered. Uh this this sucks. This this strongly sucks. This sucks. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to have happen. Somehow the 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 sense of luck and chance in this uh feels worse than dicey dungeons even though like the value of your dice doesn't really affect the action itself. It affects whether or not you can do it. It just means that, like, a one roll... If I rolled a one, that doesn't mean I only do one damage or whatever. It means I don't do anything. I wanted to be very sure that I would slap him uh, with my bullet. What are you? You have a bomb. <laughs> Five turns until boom. I see. Shield failed. And I'm dead. This is tough. I am too dumb for this game, I think. Uh, this really felt like more of a puzzle game than something like Spell Rogue or Dicey Dungeons. Uh, and I think the way that it uses its dice is the reason. For those games, the dice are the constraints on letting you play a card and often they define the damage that you do. So you set up a deck that lets you do something with any roll and the roll just decides how good your turn is. Perfect Dice treats it more like XCOM. It's all about probabilities, which makes sense. I get that. It just didn't feel that great. Especially the energy rush mechanic. That requires so many rolls to go right. And early on, the only way to ensure a roll goes right is to have a roll go wrong. It feels conflicted. Now, obviously there are a lot of roguelikes that are more big brain, more tactical. Uh, you get into the higher ascensions and Slay the Spire and it, that's a thousand IQ plays. I'm, I'm an action gal. I'm not that great with tactical games, and I just feel like Perfect Dice is setting the tactical floor a little too high, for my taste, at least. But if you are the type that really wants to puzzle out your roguelikes, and you're into this pixelated cyberpunk aesthetic, because it does do that pretty well, then this might be your jam. It just doesn't work for me, though. So first off, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching and for paying attention or even just leaving it on in the background. I do that a ton. Uh, don't blame you at all. Uh, I know I talk a lot about Steam Next Vest in this video. That was the genesis of bringing Demo Disc back. And I know it's been a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna blame Blatro uh, for that. I think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. It's, it's Italian. Uh, it's also a very, very good game. <laughs> Uh, very well received, so there's a reason I didn't cover that one. Uh, I do mean about trying to dig into the more obscure stuff, the stuff that folks haven't heard of, stuff I probably haven't heard of. So if you do have recommendations for primarily roguelikes, that is my kind of jam, but anything upcoming that's interesting, I would love to hear about it. Uh, you can mention it down in the comments below. Uh, and yeah, just thank you very much again and hope you have a good one.